last section, you read about the economic problems in Europe and the United States following World War I. In this section, you'll learn how dictators came to power in several countries during this period. The economic problems in these countries were a major factor in the rise of these dictatorships. The Rise of Dictators The apparent triumph of democracy in Europe in 1919 was extremely short-lived. Of the major European powers, only France and Great Britain were still democratic by 1939. Italy, the Soviet Union, Germany, and many other European countries adopted dictatorships. Some of these dictatorships were totalitarian states. A totalitarian state is a government that aims to control the political, economic, social, intellectual, and cultural lives of its citizens. These totalitarian states wanted to control the minds and the hearts of their citizens. This goal was achieved through the use of mass propaganda techniques and modern communications. A single leader and a single party led the totalitarian states. The result was government that was no longer interested in individual freedoms, but in imposing the collective will of the masses on everyone. Of course, the will of the masses was determined and organized by the dictator. Fascism in Italy In the early 1920s, Benito Mussolini established the first European fascist movement in Italy. Fascism is a political philosophy that glorifies the state above the individual by emphasizing the needs for a strong central government led by a dictator. The government controls people and any opposition is suppressed. Italy, like other European countries, experienced severe economic problems following World War I. Inflation grew and there were strikes. Socialists spoke of revolution. The middle class were afraid of a communist takeover. In 1919, Mussolini created a new political group, the Fascio di Combattimento, League of Combat. The term fascist comes from this name. In 1920 and 1921, he formed bands of armed fascists called Squadristi, or black shirts. They attack socialist offices and newspapers. They also use violence to break up strikes. By 1922, Mussolini's movement was growing rapidly. The middle class fear of socialism, communism, and disorder made the fascists attractive to many people. Mussolini also knew that the Italian people were angry that Italy did not receive more land in the peace settlement after the war. He won thousands of supporters by demanding more land. In 1922, the fascists threatened to march on Rome if they were not given power. The King of Italy, Victor Emmanuel III, gave in and made Mussolini Prime Minister. Mussolini used his position to create a fascist dictatorship. The Prime Minister was made head of the government, with the power to make laws by decree. The police were given unlimited power to arrest and jail people. In 1926, the fascists outlawed all other political parties in Italy. Mussolini ruled Italy as Il Duce, the leader. Mussolini used various means to control the Italian people. He created a secret police known as the OVRA, O V R A. He also used the mass media to spread propaganda. The fascists used organizations to promote fascism and to control the people. For example, youth groups were formed that focused on military activities and values. The fascists hoped to create a new nation of Italians who were fit, disciplined, and war-loving. However, the fascists did not completely destroy the country's old power structure. The military was able to keep most of its independence. Victor Emmanuel was retained as king. The Catholic Church was allowed to keep its territory in Rome, known as Vatican City. Mussolini also gave the church a large grant of money and recognized Catholicism as the sole religion of the state. In return, the Catholic Church recognized the Italian state and encouraged Italians to support the fascist regime.
A New Era in Soviet Union During the Civil War in Russia, Lenin followed a policy of war communism. The government controlled most industries and took grain from peasants in order to feed the army. When the war was over, peasants began to sabotage the program by hoarding food. The situation became even worse when a great famine hit Russia between 1920 and 1922. Five million people died. Industrial collapse followed the famine. In March 1921, Lenin gave up the policy of war communism. He began a program known as the New Economic Policy, NEP. It was a modified version of the old capitalist system. Peasants were allowed to sell their produce openly. Small businesses could be privately owned and operated. The NEP saved the country from economic disaster. In 1922, Lenin and the Communists formally created a new state called the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics, also known as the USSR, or the Soviet Union. When Lenin died in 1924, there was a struggle for power within the Politburo. The Politburo was a seven-member committee that had become the leading policy-making body of the Communist Party. One group in the Politburo wanted to end the NEP and begin a program of rapid industrialization. Leon Trotsky led this group. This group also wanted to spread communism to other nations around the world. Another group wanted to continue the NEP and to focus on building a socialist state in Russia. This group believed that rapid industrialization would hurt the peasants. At the same time, there was a personal rival rivalry in the Pur Politburo between Trotsky and another Politburo member, Joseph Stalin. Stalin was the party general secretary and appointed regional and local party officials. He used this influential position to gain control of the Communist Party. Because he had uh, appointed thousands of officials within the party, he had a great deal of support. By 1929, Stalin was able to establish a powerful dictatorship. Trotsky was expelled from the party and eventually murdered. The Stalinist era was a period of economic, social, and political changes that were even more revolutionary than the revolutions of 1917. Stalin ended the NEP in 1928 and began his first five-year plan. The five-year plan set economic goals for five-year periods. Their their, this, their purpose was to transform Russia from an agrarian country into an industrial country. The first five-year plan emphasized the production of capital equipment, or heavy machines that produced other goods, as well as weapons. This plan resulted in dramatic increases in the production of steel and oil, but the Russian people paid a terrible price for industrialization. The number of workers in cities increased by millions, but housing actually declined. As a result, millions of people lived in pitiful conditions. Wages also declined by 43% between 1928 and 1940. The government also began a collectivized farm system. Collectivization was a system in which private farms were eliminated. Instead, the government owned all of the land while the peasants worked it. By 1934, 26 million farm family farms had been collectivized into 20, 250,000 units. Like industrialization, collectivization had a terrible cost. Peasants responded by hoarding food and killing livestock. This produced a widespread famine. 10 million peasants died in famines in 1932 and 1933. Stalin's programs had other costs. Stalin's desire to make all decisions by himself led to purges or removals of the old Bolsheviks, people who had been involved in the early days of the revolution. Stalin also purged army officials, diplomats, union officials, party members, intellectuals, and many ordinary citizens. Eight million Russians were arrested. Millions were sent to labor camps in Siberia. Others were executed. Authoritarian States in the West A number of governments in the Western world were not totalitarian, but were authoritarian. They had some features in common with totalitarian states, such as using police powers. 
But these governments did not try to create a new kind of mass society. Their main concern was preserving the old social order. Some of these governments were in Eastern Europe. Austria, Poland, Czechoslovakia, Yugoslavia, Romania, Bulgaria, and Hungary all adopted parliamentary systems after the war. But authoritarian governments soon replaced most of these systems. Only Czechoslovakia maintained its democracy. Parliamentary systems failed for several reasons. First, these countries did not have a tradition of democracy. They were mostly rural, and many of the peasants were illiterate. Ethnic conflicts also caused problems. Powerful landowners, the churches, and even some members of the middle class were afraid of land reform, communism, and ethnic conflict. These groups supported an authoritarian government that maintained the old system. In Spain, democracy also failed to survive. General Francisco Franco led a revolt against the democratic government in 1936. A bloody civil war began. Germany and Italy aided Franco's forces with weapons, money, and men. The Spanish Republican government was aided by thousands of foreign volunteers and by trucks, planes, tanks, and advisors from the Soviet Union. The Spanish Civil War ended when Franco's forces took Madrid in 1939. Franco established a dictatorship that favored large landowners, business people, and the Catholic clergy. Because it favored traditional groups and did not try to control every aspect of people's lives, his dictatorship was authoritarian, not totalitarian. Just time to go